everybody, Merry Christmas and welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. Winter is approaching, and as we cuddle up and get closer as it gets colder, sickness is bound to happen. One of the most common symptoms during this time of year is cough. We're going to talk about the mechanism of cough, the workup of cough, and the diagnosis of cough, and a little bit more in today's episode. Jingle bells, Batman smells. Cough. <coughs> it's defined as a forceful release of air from the lungs against closed vocal cords. It's a defense mechanism. It helps expel inhaled particles, even organisms, from entering the lung. It protects the airways. But did you know cough is the most common reason why patients seek medical attention? It's also underworked up and likely undertreated. Let's get into this a little more. When thinking about cough, we have to understand there is acute, subacute, and chronic. Acute cough lasts less than three weeks, subacute, three to eight weeks. Chronic cough is cough that lasts more than eight weeks. And let's be honest, if you're watching this video, you're likely someone that has chronic cough or know someone who has a chronic cough. And in this age of COVID, people who cough feel embarrassed, isolated, and alone, and want to scream, it's not COVID. Well, then what is it? And why is this happening? The mechanism I will get into, but first, let's go through the workup. When someone coughs, it's likely due to diseases of the upper airway or lower airway. I want you to always ask if they smoke. If they do, you're done. I'm, I'm just kidding. Ask them to quit. You wanna check the medication list and make sure they are not on ACE inhibitors, which can cause cough, or other medicines that may contribute to cough. From a medical standpoint, I want you to think of asthma, aspiration, and inhalation, the environment, even your work environment. When you physically examine these patients, listen to hear for crackles on exam. If you're worried about parenchymal lung disease, obtain a chest x-ray and spirometry. Look for pulmonary edema on chest x-ray, vascular congestion, B lines, parabronchial cuffing. You may want to get a BNP along with sputum eosinophils looking for allergy or non-allergic eosinophilic bronchitis. You want to get a CBC with diff and a local RAS panel looking for allergens. I tend to get CTs a lot. I'm a pulmonologist and I like looking at them. This will rule out interstitial lung disease, cancers, and other parenchymal lung disease. Also, due to Irwin studies in the 80s, if badness and lung disease is ruled out, I place everyone on an antihistamine, an inhaled corticosteroid long-acting beta agonist, a proton pump inhibitor, and an intranasal corticosteroid. I make them continue these medications for at least 180 days or six months because it takes that long for coughs due to GERD to be treated. I will then consider bronchoscopy and more invasive procedures and even cough hypersensitivity after these patients have been on that medicine for six months. So after serious disease has been ruled out and I have no diagnosis and six months of the above therapies with the bronchoscopy show no evidence of an actual cause, I will look into calming the nerves and brain down. We tend to call this unexplained chronic cough or UCC. I will consider at that point speech pathology therapy. I will consider gabapentin up to 600 milligrams three times daily the adverse events of that include confusion and dizziness, which happens in 31% of people. I'll also consider pregabalin or Lyrica, 75 milligrams twice daily. I will also consider the antidepressant amitriptyline. But let's get into why this hypersensitivity happens. First off, cough receptors are found throughout the airway and are activated by a number of triggers. The receptors may be transient receptor potential vanilloid or TRPV1, transient receptor potential anchorin, or TRPA1, or rapidly adapting receptor or slowly adapting receptors. When these receptors are triggered, signal goes to your brain. Brain tells your glottis to close and cough. Clearly lower inflammation, upper airway inflammation, smoking and GERD can cause cough. But lately, there's been a new paradigm suggested. There seems to be a cough hypersensitivity syndrome could be peripheral afferent nerve terminals of the airway, the jugular and nodose ganglia of the vagus nerve, the sensory integration sites in the brainstem and higher brain pathways, each either overexcited or underinhibited. When you look at MRIs in people with chronic cough, you see more activity in the midbrain and less activity in the forebrain when induced to cough. We know the medications previously discussed, gabapentin, pregabalin, amitriptyline, and morphine have efficacy, but does behavioral training delivered by speech and language therapists helps? It does. And I mentioned a few of the receptors earlier. TRPV1, TRPA1. 
will respond to molecules such as capsaicin and citric acid. They're also going to stimulate A and C fibers independent of a new receptor which is gaining attention, which is the P2X3 receptor, which happens to be an ATP-gated ion channel. It is located on these sensory nerves as well. When you inhale ATP, at least in guinea pigs, you can cough. In fact, we study this in humans with a new medicine about to be released called Jeffapixin. It's a P2X3 antagonist. Chronic cough is likely due to a combination of factors, including activation of the afferent neurons due to chemical and physical stimuli, activation of sensory afferents by ATP, which originates within the lung due to inflammation acting on that P2X receptor endogenously, or another cause of cough hypersensitivity, which may reduce the cough threshold. All of this seems complicated, but this allows for multiple treatment regimens, some of which are gonna be released soon. We talked about the workup of cough earlier in this YouTube, and I want you guys to understand that thinking about cough and its mechanism is extremely difficult and more complicated than you think. But managing cough overall can be done. My thoughts are backed up by literature and experience, and I hope we can continue to become better at the management of cough, and I can't wait for the release of Jeffapixin, which is going to inhibit some of the activation of ATP leading to cough. Thanks for you guys being here today. I really appreciate you joining. Remember, I'm here just to arm you with information. I want you to come back next week for some more ammunition. Thanks for joining.